There were a lot of potential reasons that Trump won and Harris lost. From a short 100-day campaign window to concerns about inflation, I go over those reasons in separate videos and what the Democratic Party needs to do at this junction. Watch that next if you're interested. But I read an opinion article yesterday that gave a different assessment by Ben Davis at The Guardian. He goes over the various arguments and conventional wisdom and knocks them down one by one and proposes another reason, the COVID welfare state and its collapse. In the piece titled, None of the Conventional Explanations for Trump's Victory Stand Up to Scrutiny, Davis explains how the nearly overnight welfare state started during COVID and how it was unceremoniously retired and how that hurt real Americans. Do Americans miss the democratic socialism started under Trump for COVID relief? How did these policies help Americans? And do Americans miss those policies? We'll talk about that in this video. Ben Davis's opinion piece makes sense on a few levels. It's true that the size of the social and safety net grew to unprecedented levels and helped many Americans. And it's true that for some of us, this was our first introduction to democratic socialism. And it's also true as polls have suggested for years that Americans support many social democratic proposals without realizing that they're socialist. Has this changed and is more Americans supporting the democratic socialism of Sanders and the COVID socialism of Trump? If they are, they're in for a rude awakening because Trump's promised agenda this time around doesn't include any of initiatives that kept people afloat during the pandemic. In the early days of the COVID-19 pandemic, Americans faced an unparalleled crisis. Let's return for a moment to the days of masks and social distancing, of job losses, fear of eviction, healthcare shortages, and a deep sense of insecurity. As if in a plot twist nobody anticipated, it was a conservative Republican president who presided over what might be described as America's closest brush with widespread socialism. Stimulus checks arrived in mailboxes, unemployment benefits ballooned, and eviction moratoriums protected millions. For a fleeting moment, many Americans experienced a safety net they had never imagined, and for some, never thought they would need. And once they had a taste, they didn't want to go back. What began as a desperate attempt to stave off economic collapse turned into an unprecedented experiment in social welfare. The country, under Donald Trump's administration, temporarily adopted elements of a welfare state many believed would never see the light of day in the U.S. But now that it's gone, the question looms, does America miss it? In March 2020, a $2 trillion package known as the CARES Act was unleashed, distributing stimulus checks and expanding unemployment benefits by hundreds of dollars a week. There was no application process for the checks, they simply showed up. And for many, they became lifelines, paying for rent, groceries, and even keeping some businesses afloat. The enhanced unemployment benefits meant that, for the first time in decades, many low-income workers received enough to live on. Yet these actions were more than policy measures. They represented a brief moment when government stepped in to protect the vulnerable, regardless of political party. People began to ask themselves, why can't it always be this way? And in the back of their minds, they wondered what would happen when the lifelines were cut. But just as swiftly as they appeared, these policies began to vanish. Biden's presidency, tasked with a divided Congress and hostile opposition, struggled to make these measures permanent because many of the Trump Republicans wouldn't extend them. Child tax credits were reduced and the eviction moratorium ended. Families that had been able to climb out of poverty were thrown back into precarity. The noise and bustle of Washington's political wrangling quietly drowned out any meaningful efforts to sustain what many saw as a glimpse of a better safety net. To some, this was a betrayal. Democrats, often viewed as the champions of social welfare, seemed unable or unwilling to maintain the momentum of support. Polls indicated that Americans supported many of these policies in isolation, unaware of their socialist roots. As Ben Davis's Guardian article suggests, this lack of a fight may have cost the Democrats more than votes. It might have cost them the moral narrative to say, we are the party that cares for your everyday needs. For millions of Americans, the retirement of these policies was not just a line item on a federal budget, it was deeply personal. Eviction rates soared, food banks saw record demand, and many who had tasted a brief reprieve from financial insecurity were thrust back into it. 
It was this new narrative that many families found them in, only their lot grew worse with the growing inflation that only has started to return to pre-COVID prices. The working class and marginalized communities were disproportionately affected. Ironically, it was under Trump, a staunch anti-socialist, that America's first brush with widespread social relief occurred, and Biden's inability to keep it alive only deepened the wound. Does this mean America is ready for democratic socialism? If Trump's COVID relief was a social experiment, it proved one thing. Many Americans are receptive to policies that ensure a basic standard of living. They simply need the messaging, organization, and leadership to make it a permanent reality. In the months since COVID-era policies expired, whispers of nostalgia have grown louder. Americans remember what it was like to feel a little safer and a little more supported. But those whispers alone cannot drive political change. Organizations and leaders advocating for democratic socialism must bridge the gap between policy and people's lives. Effective messaging, grassroots movements, and a commitment to economic dignity can transform nostalgia into a viable political platform. The challenge lies not just in political rhetoric, but in reminding people that the government can and should be a force for good in their daily lives. The battle lines for future elections are clear. Will America double down on hyper-capitalism or embrace a system that guarantees a baseline of security for all? These are the reasons I rant that America needs to understand and talk about money. If you agree with the assertions in this video, please watch my quiz next and Americans don't like to talk about money. The story of America's brush with COVID-era socialism isn't just about economics, it's about compassion, human dignity, and what we owe to one another. It's about learning from the past to shape a more just and equitable future. The recent elections and the aftermath of COVID-era policies reveal a critical truth. Many Americans deeply valued, and in some cases, still miss the government support they experienced during the pandemic. Direct payments, enhanced unemployment benefits, eviction moratoriums, and other temporary measures offered a glimpse of a society where economic security was not a privilege, but a right. The abrupt expiration of these programs highlighted just how vulnerable many Americans are without consistent safety nets and sparked a broader conversation about the government's role in ensuring basic needs are met. For a brief period, millions saw a different reality where worries about rent, food, or medical bills were alleviated, if only temporarily. It illustrated that even limited forms of democratic socialism introduced under dire circumstances could provide stability and security. In the U.S., elements of democratic socialism already exist in programs like Medicare, Social Security, public education, and food assistance. These programs have long demonstrated the government's ability to step in to provide public goods and address economic disparities. The pandemic-era measures such as stimulus payments and expanded unemployment benefits showed how quickly and effectively government intervention can stabilize lives during crises. But as these measures were allowed to quietly expire, a void was left, and many of those who had experienced some measure of relief found themselves facing old insecurities anew. Globally, countries like Denmark, Norway, and Sweden demonstrate how democratic socialism functions effectively, balancing robust social safety nets with thriving, competitive economies and higher standards of living with a higher quality of life. They offer universal health care, comprehensive education, and strong worker protections without compromising innovation and economic dynamism. These countries serve as proof that social welfare and economic growth can, and often do, complement each other when paired with policies that prioritize public good and shared prosperity. If you're interested in these topics, check out my related videos. Modern democratic socialism doesn't aim to seize all means of production or eradicate markets. Instead, it seeks to harness government power to guarantee certain rights and necessities, ensuring all people have the opportunity to thrive. The goal is a society where essentials like healthcare, housing, and education are available to everyone, where the wealth gap narrows, and where people have a real voice in their workplaces and communities. The nostalgia and frustration surrounding the expiration of COVID-era policies provide a powerful mandate to explore democratic socialism more fully. Advocates must leverage this moment to connect real-life experiences to policies that can uplift everyone. It's time to make the case that democratic socialism is not a utopian fantasy, but a practical path to a more just, compassionate, 
and resilient society. Through effective messaging and a focus on tangible outcomes, democratic socialist leaders and organizations can build a future where economic security and opportunity are not reserved for a few, but shared among all. This approach could turn a temporary experiment into a lasting legacy of equity and well-being. Thank you for watching. At Renaissance Spirit, we're committed to exploring these deep, impactful topics, history, politics, culture, and beyond, with the goal of fostering a more humane and just world. Like the Renaissance that sparked a golden age of learning and enlightenment, we seek to illuminate the paths of truth, compassion, and understanding in today's complex society. If you found this exploration meaningful, consider subscribing and sharing. Engage with us, challenge us, and be part of this conversation. Live the Renaissance spirit history is alive, waiting to be discovered and understood anew. From the towers of Moscow to the American plains, a leader arose unchained from old chains. Comrade Trump, the capitalist king, brought the people relief. A socialist ring, hail, hail to the unexpected hand. With stimulus checks in this wide, vast land, a friend to the workers as Putin looked on, the seeds of red care on the White House lawn. No bread lines but payments, no marches, just checks. Eviction delayed as workers caught breath, unemployment expanded, safety net strong, a taste of what comrades had whispered for long. Hail, hail to the unexpected hand. With benefits rising on capital sand, from Moscow with smiles to Washington's gates, a bond unseen that destiny creates. Was it the whispers from Red Square's air that showed even Yankees the taste of welfare? Or was it the sickness, the plague from afar, that shifted this nation's bright guiding star? Some call him a traitor, some hail him anew, but policies enacted helped more than a few. A touch of red socialism from a Trump decree, more socialist measures than FDR's free hail, hail to the unexpected hand. Policies born that some can't withstand Putin smiles wide as history's tale Sings of Trump's measures behind freedom's veil Now with programs retired and memory thin Workers look back to what once could have been Comrade Trump, the unlikeliest friend A moment of socialism that came to an end Hail, hail to the unexpected hand